Your diaphragm is one of the most important muscles in your body. Your diaphragm, in case you didn't know, is your breathing muscle. And in most people, this muscle is severely degenerated, shortened, and brittle these days. And this is why people suffer from ruptured diaphragms, reflux, and things like that. And all these issues can be avoided. And above all, you can drastically raise the oxygen supply for your body a problem most older people have. I'll explain briefly what you can do to get your diaphragm back into good working order. First, so you have a good idea about the situation, I'm going to explain where you can find it in the body. Try to imagine it reaches here along these edges of the costal arch to the lumbar spine, goes up again, and comes around to this point. And like a dome, it sits in there, and when it contracts, pulling down words. It sucks in air from above, and when it relaxes, it pushes the air out again. And this shows you that a large stroke, that's the up and down, piston-like expansion of the diaphragm when you breathe in and out, that a large stroke creates great pressure differentials between the chest cavity and the abdomen. The abdomen is home to all the inner organs, the digestive system, the kidneys, the liver, and all of that. And when you have a large up and down stroke and breathe well, then this pressure differential guarantees good blood flow in your inner organs. That doesn't happen as well if your breathing is only shallow. Chest breathing, that is, something we unfortunately observe quite often these days, and particularly people who work with their brains, who live and work more in their minds than in their bodies, with the result of only doing chest breathing. Normal breathing into the abdomen, however, where you lower your diaphragm to create an overpressure and bulge out your lower belly, is hard to find these days. That's why it's so important to have full function here, so that the diaphragm can not only be flexed, but also fully relaxed, because then the volume of air that's being moved, and also the size of the pressure differential that positively affects the metabolism in the body, is much bigger. What I want to show you first is a very good osteopressure point that can be used easily, even for lay people. The diaphragm is easy to access. Right here and here. And it's because there, right in the middle, there are great differences regarding the status of these fibers here. And if these fibers are being relaxed, the entire diaphragm is relaxed, and the vessels and the esophagus, the food pipe that run through there are not pinched on. And that's very important. We're going to circle back to this shortly. You could see the point here. A brief explanation. These red dots mark the osteopressure points we press on in our osteopressure technique, used by our professional therapists, physiotherapists, and alternative practitioners on their patients. And they're accessing this area from both sides. And our osteopressure tool is perfect for reaching this place. You move in here, not down here, mind you, but in this area, and then you'll notice how tender it is. Very, very tender. So approach it with care. If you're using our tools, then you should start with the soft point that yields a bit, so that you can gently test out how sensitive this area really is, and the moment you feel you could take on a bit more pressure, switch to the medium hardness. And in case you don't have our pressure tool yet, simply take a wine cork and whittle it into a similar shape. Maybe a cork would be much harder, so you have to be careful. Mind you, nothing really bad can happen. You may be a little startled by the pain, that's all. So slowly approach the area, feel this area here first. Let's do this together. Feel for the tip of your breastbone. That's the bone here in the middle that's 
slightly just sticks out. Most people can't feel it because it reaches inward on account of the excessive tension in the diaphragm, but it should be here in the middle. In case it's not, you'll find this rounded edge here, and that means you're still on the right spot. And then you gently place the pressure tool laterally and carefully on this spot. Ina, here, please give it a try, and I'll explain. Ina's going to find the spot first. And now place the tool on it, and now hold it with both hands and just stay on it. And you at home, just follow us. Stay on it, hold the pressure up, more than 8, but under 10 on your personal pain scale. Within a minute and a minute and a half, you'll feel how this sensitivity is slowly dialing down. Can you feel it, Ina? A little, she says. It may take a while since there are a lot of tensions in the diaphragm, and that's why you should take your time, stay on it until the sensitivity is really low, and then change to the other side. Ina, please find the spot on the other side. Here's the costal arch going up on the right side. This is where it feels tender, and here's the bony tip. Okay, now I found the spot. Take your tool or your cork and place it carefully on that spot, right on it, nice and careful. Not at an angle, but right on top of it. That's right, nice and straight. Not at an angle. It looked like you were placing it too much to the side. So what's guiding you here? is the sensitivity, the pain. The pain is guiding you, and you just wait for it to relax, and after that, you take the osteopressure tool off, check what it feels like, take a deep breath, and I'm sure it feels quite different. And now, after having relaxed our diaphragm, and with the help of osteopressure, you'll be able to breathe easier, and we're going to make use of this fact now. Ina's going to show you, and you at home, just follow along with her. Ina, please start by simply taking a deep breath in, and then exhaling through your nose, in deep, and then out through your nose, breathe in through your nose, exhale through your nose, exactly. Breathe nice and easy, in, out, now you breathe into your abdomen. In and out, the belly rises and goes down again. Breathe in again, and the belly goes out. Then exhale, and it goes down again. Okay. So, let's tick the box. Breathing in and out, done. And now, we're going to do the following. You at home, too. You breathe in, but then you exhale through your slightly opened mouth. And in again, and out again. So now, you try to exhale as much air as possible. Since breathing out means that your diaphragm goes up and stretches out. It means you're expanding your diaphragm. So here we go again. Breathe in, and out. More, 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 more. You at home too. More, more. And relax and breathe normally again. Okay. See? We were already stretching. A stretching you can start by breathing out. And we want to increase this stretch. Because the more you stretch, the more your diaphragm can expand, the more flexible it becomes, and the more range it has in its rise and fall. So breathe in. Breathe out as much as possible. Now, you bring your upper body down. Exhale even more, more, and come up again. Okay. Now, you at home, you probably noticed that bending forward like this allowed you to exhale even more, because the overpressure down here pushes your diaphragm up, and you could stretch your diaphragm even more. And this is where we want to hold our diaphragm in position. That means you close your mouth and hold your nose as you come up. 
So breathe in. You at home, do the same. Exhale, open your mouth slightly, just a little bit. Exhale, more. Bend over. Exhale as much as you can. Hold your mouth, hold your nose, and come up. Stop. Relax. Relax and let go. Let me explain. You just came up and already noticed that with your mouth and nose closed, a funny feeling set in as you came up because the negative pressure pulled on your diaphragm. That was the feeling you had as you came up. And now, after you come up again, with your mouth closed and your nose too, suck against your closed mouth and nose. That flexes your diaphragm in your body. And it's getting used to this elongation, this stretch. Okay, that's what we're going to do now. And you just follow Ina and my instructions closely, okay? Take a deep breath in. Exhale through a slightly opened mouth. And as soon as you've reached the end point while sitting, bend over forward to exhale any remaining air, close your mouth and your nose and come up immediately. And you start sucking more, more, yeah, move around a bit, and now your diaphragm, which is all the way up now, is being flexed, so it can get used to this state, so it can take in this flexible position. And now you could do that as long as you have enough air. Okay, that's enough. And you at home can do this as often as you want, but that is the best exercise to make your diaphragm more and more flexible, and there's nothing more important for your breathing, for your entire inner health, than this. Please, write us a comment on our exercises here and how you did with them. Other than that, remember the pipes in the middle we talked about. The diaphragm pinches on the food pipe, and that has a lot to do with reflux. If you click on here, you'll find three videos on reflux and how, in most cases, to get rid of it quickly. And down here, you can subscribe to our channel, and please activate the bell so you won't miss out on any of our videos. Now, Ina and I say... Goodbye.